Hello and welcome back once again. In this session, we will introduce the computer memory. Through this session, we will understand how the computer memory works. We will then give a definition of the computer memory and look at its types. We will look at the memory hierarchy and have an understanding of the memory system. Finally, we will look at the most frequently asked questions on the introduction to computer memory. Feel free to learn along, and in case of any questions, you are free to ask them on the comment session so that we may discuss them in our coming videos. Now, in various ways, our memories define what kind of people we are. They help us recall the past, learn from it, and plan ourselves a brighter future. <coughs> Computers tend to behave the same way as people, and their memory plays the same role as what happens in the human beings. For example, be it a 100-page document or even a 24-episode movie series or let's say a single line of code or instruction, the computer memory stores all this data in basic units called bits. A bit is simply a binary digit and each of these bits are stored in what we call a memory cell. This memory cell exists in two states, that is zeros and ones. Files and programs in the memory consist of millions of these bits. These bits are processed in the CPU, and we all know that the CPU is the computer's brain. Like human beings, computers also have shorter memory for the temporary activities and the long-term memory for the permanent activities. Let me give you a simple example. When you run a program, or let's say an application software, such as the Microsoft Office Word, the operating system as a resource allocator will do its allocation job. It will allocate a portion of the shorter memory to the Microsoft Office Word application software. This application software will then be loaded from the long-term memory, such as the hard drive, and then be placed on the portion allocated in the short-term memory space. You will perform your work or you will perform your job on the Word document and after working on the document, you will wish to save a copy of the document to your computer, maybe for future reference on later days. The copy will be sent to a long-term memory, also called a secondary or permanent storage. And on that, you will be able to retrieve that document even if you shut down the computer and get it on again. Therefore, we can define computer memory as it is a physical device or place capable of storing information either temporary or permanent. We can also say they are devices which can retain data for a given period of time. The computer memory is classified into types. And we have four types of computer memory. 
the two main types of computer memory are the primary memory and the secondary memory. And the other two types are the cache memory and the CPU registers. To understand this classification of memory, we will use the memory hierarchy diagram. This is the memory hierarchy diagram and it divides the memory system into four categories. That is, we have the registers, the cache memory, the primary memory, and the secondary memory. As we can see in this diagram, speed and cost per bit increases in the upward direction of the memory hierarchy, while the size of the memory or the storage capacity grows in the downward direction from the smallest to the largest in size. We also can see the temporary and the permanent memory with their respective examples. At the bottom of this diagram, we have the secondary memory or the mass storage. These are the external memories, also called non-volatile memories. This type of memory can hold data even if there is no power. They have a high storage capacity, but they are very slow compared to the primary memory. The three main types of the secondary memory is the magnetic storage, where hard disk drives are included. We have the optical storage, where we have the floppy disk as a good example. We then have the solid state drives. Just above the secondary memory, we have the primary memory. It is also called the main memory. This is because it is the working memory space to the processor. Now, this main memory holds data and instructions that the processor is currently working on. It has a limited capacity, but it is faster than the secondary memory. As the main building block of the main memory, we have the DRAM cell, that is the dynamic random access memory cells. These are the main building blocks of the main memory. This memory acts as an internal volatile memory and they don't retain data when the power is lost. It is divided into two that is, we have the RAM and the ROM, which is in full the random access memory and the read-only memory. Now, faster than this primary memory, we have the cache memory. It is just above the primary memory on the diagram, and they have a low capacity compared to, to the main memory. Now, the cache memory is very costly, and they work to speed up the system performance. They do this by holding temporarily the most frequently used data by the processor. Finally, on the uppermost layer or category, we have the CPU registers. As we all know, the CPU processes data with a very high speed. This is possible since it demands the storage of the intermediate data stored in the CPU registers. Day after day, the number of bits to be processed grows at a very high rate, and this has become a challenge to the computer developers on the size speed, and cost of the computer memories.
we will cover the whole memory system as it is briefly seen in this memory chart. This will help us understand the whole memory system. I will leave you with the most commonly asked questions on the introduction of the computer memory. And if you also have any other question, feel free to post your questions on the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe for more sessions. Thank you.